Uh, welcome back to Devon Pond Plants and this morning I just want to go through my top 10 favourite plants for a small to medium sized pond. This is Butamus umbellatus flowering rush. You can see the flower here, this doesn't actually belong to this plant, I cut it this morning, but you can see the flower on the top running to about four feet high and uh, this one is quite a vigorous plant and is happiest in shallow water in full sun. It's quite an easy plant to grow, but you do need to repot it quite regularly because all the best flowers and growth will be on the end and the old crown will become unproductive and woody like it does in many herbaceous perennials you might grow in the garden. This is Calthopolystris king cup or marsh marigold. Uh, this is an early flowering plant with yellow flowers. As you will see on the label, it's finished flowering for the year now. And when these finish flowering, the leaves naturally start going brown and black blotches, this is perfectly normal. So what we do at the nursery is to cut all the foliage right back to the crown, leaving only just any new leaves coming up here. And that way you will get some fresh foliage and more flowers in about six weeks time. And sometimes you can repeat that again to get another small flush at the end of the season. This is a very easy plant to grow and wants to be in water just above the crown, not too deep, it resents being put in water halfway up the leaves, so it won't do so well if you put it too deep in the water. This is a hybrid iris called Iris Vesicolor by Robusta Gerald Darby. Bit of a mouthful, but most people just call it Gerald Darby. It has the benefit of when it starts to grow in the spring, you get almost completely purple new shoots, which do go green, but with the purple remaining in the base. It flowers in June with lots of lovely light purple flowers, very reliable and very easy to grow. You might equally well select Iris pseudocorus, our yellow flag iris. Now lots of people seem to be terrified of yellow flag iris because it grows very rapidly, undoubtedly. Uh, but if it's in a small pond, you haven't really got any excuse not to take it out every now and again, chop it in half, repot it and give away the other half or just get rid of it if, if you need to, because it's a good garden plant too and it's native. This one can't be described as native because it's a hybrid plant. This is purple loosestrife, Lithrum salicaria, a tall native plant. Grows to about five, six feet, that's 1.8 meters to you young folk out there, uh, with lots and lots of purple flowers, very good for bees and butterflies, lots of pollinators land on this. And as you can see, it produces a lot of roots, which is good for all those things living under the water. It's not all about what happens above the surface, it's also about what happens beneath the surface. So a very easy and reliable plant, which can be propagated from cuttings and uh, will be a good addition to your pond for later on in the summer. Now I'm going to introduce a few creeping plants to give you surface cover. Surface cover is very important in a pond and we'll be talking about that more in future videos. So this is water forget-me-not. This is a garden cultivar called mermaid. It's not the wild native one, which for comparison, that is the native water forget-me-not, this is mermaid. So personally, I prefer mermaid because it's just bigger and better with nicer foliage and leaves. But if you want to stick to a true native one, no reason not to choose that one as well. These grow quite rapidly and the older part of the plant often goes black and unattractive. So just keep pinching little bits off and poking them into some soil somewhere and you'll get new plants growing very quickly and keep it fresh and new. This is Menanthes trifoliata, bog bean. This one grows with floating stems and trailing roots. Doesn't really need much soil to root into. You'll find these roots will just trail into the water and take their nutrients direct from the water, which is a very good thing because it is water with low nutrients that keeps the algae at bay. It's um, a much better plant than the potted specimen would suggest. It's very difficult to keep this in pots because it wants to wander out all the time and the best growth is always on the ends. But we'll show you a short video of this growing in its actual habitat later on. So that's Menianthes bog bean. This is Potentilla palustris, marsh sanquoil, with nodding maroon shaped, maroon colored flowers, I should say. This one again, as you can see, will root from the stems and keep moving across the pond and rooting into other plants' baskets as it goes and provide valuable surface cover. And it'll also provide valuable twiggy material for amphibians like toads and newts and frogs to spawn in the spring 
when all the softer plants have died back and there's nothing left. This is Persicaria amphibia, Amphibious bistort, one of my favourite native plants. This one, as its name suggests, will either grow with water around about here or in damp soil, with the foliage then being upright and above the surface. Or if you grow it 50 centimetres below the water, these stems will rise up to the top and the leaves and flowers will float, as you might be able to see on the photo of the plant. Again, this produces lots of twiggy, woody material, which is good for early cover for spawning amphibians. This is brook lime, Veronica bacabunga. Little tiny blue flowers in the axils all summer long. Again, like the myosotis, needs to be constantly refreshed by just pinching pieces off and rooting them. It roots very easily in the stems and uh, just keep fresh plants going all the time for a nice easy cover plant to use. This is a non-native plant, Pontederia cordata, pickerel weed from the Americas. But I use this a lot in planting schemes because it gives you a lot of late flowers, which are very good for pollinators when everything else is finished. Lots of nice dark green, interesting foliage with oar shaped leaves and makes a nice big stand quite quickly. It's not what you would call invasive. It's not going to uh, escape across the garden and cause a nuisance to itself, but um, it will give you lots and lots of foliage and flowers just at the time when everything else has finished. Now I've got one additional plant, so you had your top 10, but this is the number 11 of top 10, because I couldn't do a presentation without it. This is hornwort, Ceratophyllum demersum, a native oxygenating plant growing on the bottom of your pond. Oxygenating plants are so called because they grow under the water, and therefore the oxygen they produce as a result of photosynthesis has to dissolve into the water as it escapes and so it keeps the water at oxygen levels up. It doesn't ever root, it just grows in a loose mat like this on the bottom of the pond. Occasionally clumps may float to the surface. It'll grow more or less like that in the water. And uh, if you've got too much of it, it's easy to fish out because it hasn't got any roots. So it's a good, reasonably fast growing, native oxygenating plant, and it's a standard go-to one. Often not available till May, but uh, it should be available in good quantity through the summer. Thank you for watching Devon Pond Plants Top 10. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get the benefit of all our new videos being released throughout the year.